And welcome back to Black Renaissance. Please welcome the CEO of Girls Inc. of Alameda County, Jelaine Virgil. Welcome. Thank you. It's so good to have you on here. Uh, I had a chance to uh, sort of learn a little bit about what Girls Inc. is about. We did mm -hmm. a story not too long with some of the young ladies from Girls Inc. being introduced to Steph Curry when he won his MVP award. I thought, what is this organization that I don't know much about and haven't heard much about? So it's great to have you on here to talk about it. Wonderful. So for, for people who are not familiar with Girls Inc., you guys offer a wide range of services for all levels of, or all ages for young mm -hmm. girls. So tell me a little bit about what you do. Well, at Girls Inc., we are empowering girls to navigate the barriers that they face so that they can realize their potential, uh, develop into healthy, educated, and independent adults, and thrive. And we do offer a continuum of services from K through 12. Um, we really are focused on inspiring our girls to be strong, smart, and bold. And we say strong through healthy living, which includes all aspects of their health, from mental health to their reproductive health and their physical health. Um, smart through academic engagement, so we start with literacy and move through STEM and college and career access, mm. and then bold through leadership, um, so really helping them to establish their voice and be able to advocate for themselves and for others. So. It really is all-encompassing. I is. mean, when I hear that, I think we hear about programs that uh, do the academic portion of that mm -hmm. or uh, maybe the social aspect of it. I don't. Mental health is not something that we frequently hear talked about, well, in communities of color overall, but right. uh, for young girls especially. That's right, and it really is a tragedy because they're, young girls have a number of mental health needs. Um, they're at high risk for depression. Um, and specifically, communities of color are not as uh, good about access mental health. There's, there's a lot of stigma around it. Um, but particularly if you can um, kind of integrate it into um, some activities that are already happening and make sure that they're able to access mental health, you can catch issues uh, very early on and make sure that they don't continue. Um, for many of the girls that we serve, we are working with girls from low-income communities and for that means for us a lot of girls of color. Um, and they are dealing with trauma on an ongoing basis. Uh, some of it's ongoing trauma from just uh, being in poverty, um, having housing insecurity or food insecurity. Mm. And then there's additional traumatic events that happen, violent events that happen in the community that the girls are trying to process while they're trying to grow and develop. And this is it's very difficult. It's difficult for adults to do it, let alone children. Um, so mental health services can be really helpful for them in processing the trauma so that they can go back into the classroom and grow and develop. So incredibly important to have those services. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, you guys managed to incorporate academics and then also a lot of fun. We saw some of those pictures there just a moment ago uh, with some of the activities that you do. I saw some whitewater rafting. It looks like we've got uh, a young girl doing some sort of STEM, mm -hmm. STEM work there. Uh, so it's really coming at it from all, all different angles, it seems. We really do serve the whole girl, and that's what we're focused on. Um, you know, there's so many messages that our, that our girls are receiving from society that they're not valued. And I think we could take a look at the news and see all of the ways in which our girls are not valued by our society. And so it becomes really important for our girls to have a space where, where they can discover their worth. And what we see is that they struggle with their worthiness based on these messages they're receiving. Um, and so we have, we have created this space that really combines uh, trained mentors, a research-based curricula, and a pro-girl environment that enables them to really have a safe space to explore, to take positive risks. And that's what you see when you see some of the surfing that they're doing. Positive risks, uh, I positive like that. Positive risks. Mm -hmm. you wanna, I mean, we want them to be able to make some mistakes, but to do so in a safe environment. And so that's, that's what we're really focused on, creating that environment for them to do that. And girls have so many pressures on them that, um, that aren't the same for boys. And it's not to say that boys don't have their own needs, but their, their needs are really unique. And so we want to make sure that girls have their unique needs addressed. Um, girls are more likely to have household caretaking responsibilities than boys are. They're more likely to be at risk for sexual exploitation, for sexual assault, for dating violence, for rape, uh, for pregnancy. And so all of these things that uh, girls are dealing with that uh, need to be addressed and they need to have support in order to do that. And yet we see a lack of programs specifically geared toward mm -hmm. young women. We we hear a lot of talk about um, programs for young black men and we hear about the achievement gap with, with, with black boys in particular. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I don't want to pit the two against each other. It's something where help is needed in all of these areas, but it seems like there is a particular uh, lack of focus on, on young girls and young girls of color in particular. 
That's right, and I, I wouldn't say it's an either or as well. I think our young boys need support as well, and I would advocate for that. Uh, what I do think is that oftentimes we are thinking that our girls will be served for the by the same programs that serve our boys. Mm. And those programs are often not geared toward the girls and don't have their specific needs in mind. And so what we're advocating for is a space that is pro-girls for girls to be able to have the support that they need for, for their unique needs. Yeah, midnight basketball or those sort of things come to mind, which mm -hmm. obviously girls are basketball fans. I'm one of them, right. okay? But, <laughs> but at the same time, you want something that is specifically reaching girls where they are um, across a wide spectrum. Absolutely. It sounds like that's what you guys are doing. Uh, you've been on the job CEO here for just a few months. Um, can you talk about what your vision is for the future for Girls Inc.? Absolutely. Well, I'm really excited about we have our downtown resource center, the Simpson Center for Girls, that opened uh, in 2013. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited about continuing to expand on the services that we provide there. When we first opened, we were expecting maybe 40 girls, and 100 came in that first year. 100. 100. Wow. And since then, we've continued to expand. Um, so we have two models, our school-based model and our center-based model. Um, beginning in the fall, we'll be in one in every four schools in East Oakland. Wow. In elementary schools, I should clarify. Mm -hmm. um, and that's specifically for our literacy program. So um, one in every four students from a low-income household is reading at or above grade level in third grade. And that's mm -hmm. a critical point at which students transition from learning to read to reading to learn. And so our literacy program for our elementary school is, is a huge, um, it has a huge impact in the community. And we're really focused on getting the kids reading at or above grade level. And our kids are two, two and a half times as likely to read it at or above grade level. Well, you are doing amazing work and I'm so glad to have Girls Inc. on here. For more information about Girls Inc. of Alameda County, log on to girlsinc-alameda.org. That's it for Black Renaissance. We'll be back next month with more. Thanks for joining us.